my name is Roshni and I am a life coach. If you are new here, welcome. This channel is called Betty Grew Up and it's a channel about taking back control of your mental health. Let's get right to it. So the first thing I wanna talk about today is how to actually know when you're addicted to chaos. In today's society, obviously a lot of us are really busy and some of us are addicted to chaos and some of us aren't. So I'm gonna talk about how to know when you are truly addicted to chaos and it's more than just your job or a busy lifestyle but it's actually you know a bigger problem that you might have so the main difference is that you can be a really really busy person you can have a lot of projects going on you can feel like you're never fully in control of your life in a good way like you always have a lot going on and it's always hard to keep up but you live for it and that's great that's i would never discourage someone from you know wanting to be active and wanting to be productive someone who loves being busy can also admit that they need to relax or you know take a day off even if it's like one day a month even if it's just taking an hour every week for self-care you know a person who's busy will realize that you know kind of that give and take relationship is what is needed to make impactful work um, on a consistent basis but when you are addicted to chaos you not only will not ever want to put that work away but you will always find something else to replenish it so it could be partying it could be drama dating and you know kind of having like a roller coaster of emotions when it comes to dating either one person or multiple people and distracting yourself that way um, this can reflect in like drugs and addiction this can affect us in so many different ways um, but I think would say the biggest out of all of these things is the fact that someone who's addicted to chaos will take that chaos home with them so it doesn't just follow them around in between meetings and on uber rides and all that kind of thing it literally comes home with them and inside they always feel chaotic so another thing that I want you to understand if you think that you might be addicted to chaos is kind of the reason behind why we might do it and I don't know if I ever realized this at the time but I think on some level or another that was definitely me at a certain point you know I was constantly with friends with big groups of people i was doing this and that i was partying i was you know there were a lot there was always so much going on in my life and a lot of it was you know really productive and healthy healthy and things that i could put on my resume but a lot of it was you know distracting me from my overall goals but i felt like i needed that constant just like energy and, and chaos around me i wanted to talk about why we actually end up being addicted to chaos everyone has you know a slightly different journey but in general i would say that when we we feel chaotic inside it feels better to replicate that chaos outside so we don't have to give in to what is going on in our minds and in our hearts if you have kind of like a whirlwind of thoughts going on in your mind or you know if you're just constantly confused and indecisive and jumping from relationship to relationship or you know you just feel like you really can't sit still for long and you're just always restless a lot of the time we feel like that inside and it feels really just you know difficult to confront that or we may not always know how to confront that so we decide to make our external reality replicate what's going on inside so in some ways it can be intentional to say look I have all this stuff going on in my head but if I go from party to party then I have something to think about and if I have all these friends and all these different people then the second that I'm bored I can move to someone else and you know have someone distract me from what's going on the second point is that your external reality is a reflection of your internal reality so as much as you want your you know even if it was a choice and you wanted to choose certain friends or certain ways to distract yourself in order to deal with the chaos that you're feeling inside once you start doing that that honestly becomes a pattern that you keep repeating and repeating and the other thing is that when you're distracting yourself, if you're not actually addressing what's going on inside, it's gonna keep manifesting in your life. But if you're used to living in that chaotic emotional state and if you're not doing anything to address what's going on behind it and the other questions that you have, then you are going to keep recreating that conscious environment in your life. No matter, you know, what you do, you know, if you lose weight or if you, you know, find a stable partner, all of that is great. And I'm sure it will help you, you know, in terms of your mental health in some way. But until you really go to the core and have the courage to face those fears and to really face the emotions that you're scared of delving into, 
you will keep recreating whatever you feel inside and it's gonna manifest in some way. So I don't want that to happen for you and it's something that's so preventable and it really just takes a quick introspection and a little bit of work and it definitely can be the, some of the hardest work that we do, but it's definitely the most rewarding and no one can ever take the work that you put on yourself away from you. And then the last thing that I wanted to say is that when you are addicted to chaos, the last thing you care about is mindfulness and I completely understand that and I was the same way as well. But honestly, it's so essential and I'm going to tell you why. So mindfulness is basically a muscle and the reason that we practice it when we're, you know, in an okay state of mind or feeling all right is so that when we do feel like crap or when we are depressed or when we are feeling really anxious, we can use the muscle that we already have and the, the understanding of mindfulness that we've already built to tap into that practice for two, three minutes, five minutes when we are feeling, you know, really depressed or anxious. And I'm not going to say it's a miracle. I'm not going to say it's like something that makes it go away immediately, but it is something that has honestly helped me more in the moment than I can ever say. Looking for an instant pill, medication still isn't even the answer because most SSRIs take two weeks, you know, to begin to really start to work. Um, so if you're thinking about, you know, a mindfulness practice that you do, you know, every now and then for five minutes at a time and you ease in that way and versus, you know, waiting two weeks, like it's not that much of a difference anymore. Um, does that make sense? I hope, I hope you know what I'm saying. And again, I'm not shaming anyone. I would never say that, you know, medication is a bad thing as like a blanket statement. I know it helps so many people out there. So I'm not one of those people or one of those life coaches at all that says, you know, it's all the power of positive thinking. Like I do believe that positive thinking and controlling our thoughts is huge for our mental health but I also understand that there are you know different kinds of effects and different things that can get in the way of your day-to-day -day life and I wouldn't ever want to discourage someone from looking into options like medication if that is genuinely what you need and so you know I hope I make that clear um, all of these are things that you can still try while you're on medication or while you're trying out medication but it's just another tool to have in your bag for that one time that, you know, even if you took your medication that day, but you happen to have a panic attack, what do you do then? And mindfulness is so, so key in that because it allows you to take five minutes out of your day when you're still in bed or still brushing your teeth. Like you don't even have to go out of your way to find like a $200 pillow that you can sit on every day in front of like this fancy altar. Like it's, it doesn't have to be that way at all. You can spend time that you're already spending on the train or on the subway or getting ready or doing your makeup or, you know, the extra 10 minutes that you spend in bed every morning looking at Instagram, just spend a little bit of that time breathing and just letting yourself kind of stay in that in-between state of sleep and wake and allow yourself to fall into a meditation or count your breath or find a word. Sometimes the best thing that you can do is take like three minutes of your morning, find an intention for that day. And I love it because it speaks to like the spontaneity that I have. And a lot of the time, like I'm not that great with like daily routines where it's the same thing every day. So if I can pick something a little bit different that works really well for me so you can pick a different word and just meditate on that for three minutes in the morning so whether it's before you actually get out of bed whether it's you know doing your morning routine just pick an intention and say that if you want your intention to just be love you could just repeat love 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 or you know say it out loud or say it in your mind or you can say things like I am love like a simple mantra like that um, so whatever you really want to dedicate that day towards or whatever you want that day to be a part of and it could even be fun it could even be friends it could even be relationships it could be you know it doesn't have to be just about you and when you have had you know the practice of doing it before when you are in a happier healthier mindset then it'll carry over and just you know the act of doing a ritual like that that you normally do when you're happy will have an effect on you but um picking a mantra or you know wanting to embody a certain feeling will really really help you achieve that feeling and achieve that mood and it's just a really simple sweet exercise that you can do at any point that will just help you kind of get back on track and help you feel like you're a little bit more connected to yourself. I did have one last little tool and it was actually in another video of mine. It would make this video a little bit long if I went into it now, but I wanted to point out another one of my videos. It is called how to uh, make a kinesthetic anchor. So basically what that means is that um, in neuro-linguistic programming, which is um, something that I use in my life coaching practice, you we talk about how a part on your body can be 
something that kind of anchors a certain mood or a certain feeling. So it basically starts with a really simple visualization exercise, which is actually really fun. It's just thinking of your uh, favorite memories. And then I'll teach you how you can apply those memories into a point on your body so that every time you touch that point, it kind of brings you back to that time when you were feeling happy and light and um, all these beautiful emotions that you want to recreate. So definitely check that video out. It's really, really going to be helpful. And I know in some ways what I just said sounds a little bit crazy, but just think about how like a certain food will instantly take you back to a certain time or a certain smell will take you back to a certain time. It helps us take advantage of how our brain already works so that we can use it for our benefit and, you know, use it in a smarter and healthier way. So I hope that you check that out and I hope that this video helped you. There's definitely a lot more that I could say on this topic but I didn't want this video to get too long. So if you want me to film a part two, please let me know. Just go ahead and request it in the comments below and let me know if any of these tips resonated with you. I would love to hear from you. If you want to message me privately, you can do so on my Patreon. You can join my Patreon community for as little as $2 and you will get um, access to private webinars, different one-on-one -on -one conversations, and personal advice from me as well as personally requested videos. So I have a bunch of great stuff if you want to check it out over there. I am at bitchygrewup.com and at bitchygrewup on, of course, YouTube and Instagram. And I just joined Twitter as well. Again, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I love you guys. Happy healing.